preventative maintenance. So we're going to talk about the things you can do to make sure your computer is running more efficiently and faster than it used to. Just like your car, we got to get your routine oil changes and your tire rotations. Your computer has some things that you should be doing on a daily basis, right? First one is we should be doing backups. And Windows provides a utility called Windows Backup. It enables you to fix problems by restoring your data files that were on the computer prior to an issue. So you can do a full backup, an incremental backup, or a differential backup. When you do a full backup, it backups, backs up every single file on the machine. When you do an incremental backup, it backs up everything since the last full backup. And when you do a differential backup, it does a backup of everything since the last differential backup. So why this becomes important is, let's say I do a full backup every Sunday, okay, and I have an issue on Wednesday. If I'm doing incremental backups, on Monday I'm copying everything since Sunday. On Tuesday I'm copying everything since Sunday, and on Wednesday I'm copying everything since Sunday. So I can just go and do my full restore, and then my one incremental restore. If I'm doing differential though, the stuff I do on Monday is just from Sunday to Monday. The stuff I do on Tuesday is from Monday to Tuesday. The stuff I do on Wednesday is from Tuesday to Wednesday, right? And so if I want to restore everything to Wednesday, I have to put in the full and then the first differential, the second differential, and the third differential. So it's more effort, but the differentials take a lot less time to do the backup. So it's a trade-off on how quick is it going to be to restore versus how quick is it going to be to do my backups every night, okay? Um, that's the idea of full incremental and differential backups. Check disk. We talked briefly about this before. <clears throat> but it's going to enable you to check your hard disk for any errors on the physical platter and automatically correct them and mark those sectors as bad so it won't use them in the future. And again, you can do this by right-clicking on your drive, going to Properties, clicking on Tools, and then you can go ahead and start your check disk by doing the error checking at the top. Or there's a text-based version inside the command prompt by using CHKESK for check disk. Defragmentation. This assists Windows in regaining lost read or write performance due to fragmenting your data. So if you think about a filing cabinet, I've got one filing cabinet with four drawers, and if I need to pull out one file and I had to go through four different drawers to get it, that would take me a while, right? But if all four pieces of it are all in the first drawer, I can get it quicker. That's the idea here with defragmentation. We're going to resort all the files and put them in the nice contiguous block. And again, you can click on that same place under your disk properties, go to tools, defragment now, uh, or defrag from the command prompt. System restore. This is under your system properties. It's going to enable you to fix problems caused by defective hardware or malicious software by going back to a previous restore point, which was your last known good configuration part. Um, if you have system protection on, this is going to create system restore points for you at a regular interval and any time that some, some major events happen, or you can go into this and hit create and create one at any signal point that you want. Uh, so for instance, you just installed a bunch of software, you tested it, you know it's good, you might want to go ahead and create a restore point at that point. So you know that today at this time, it's a good point. And I can use that as a rollback if I need to. Patch management. So acquiring, testing, and installing multiple security updates or code changes to the workstations across the network. What we do with patch management is we want to make sure that we are installing all these Windows updates, right? Now, if we're in a big enterprise environment, we don't want Microsoft just pushing out updates to us willy-nilly, right? So usually what we'll do is we will have them, we'll take it and put it on one machine, test it, make sure it doesn't break anything, and then we'll push it out to the rest of the machines on the network. Um, if you go to Microsoft's tech center, they'll tell you about the different security bulletins that come out. For instance, this one is Microsoft 08, meaning 2008. 067 was the 67th issue of the year. This was a critical vulnerability. It allows somebody to get remote access to your machine over your file sharing capability and gain administrative rights over your computer. Um, it's a very uh, popular one that we use in ethical hacking classes. Uh, it was a big problem with XP in 2003 systems. Okay? Um, Windows 7, they fixed this and they moved forward. But in the old systems, this was a big issue. This is just an example of one, but you can actually go and look at the security bulletins, and as a tech in the cybersecurity world, you'll continually keep track of, hey, there's a new bulletin that came out, and here's the patch that goes with it. Let me go ahead and install this update so I'm no longer vulnerable to this issue. Drivers and firmware updates. So driver updates are now handled by Microsoft Update. When you do a Microsoft Update, it'll download security updates and driver updates for you. 
Um, but sometimes the ones that they put in from Microsoft may not be the ones that really you want. You want the one from your, your particular manufacturer for your network card or your video card. And so you might want to go separately to their website and get it. Additionally, we have firmware updates. The administrator can use the vendor supply tools. Uh, where do we have our firmware again? Things like the BIOS, things like RAID controllers, optical drives, hard drive controllers, things like that, right? Windows does not do automatic updating of firmware. This is very manufacturer specific, and you have to install the firmware updates to permit the necessary memory and CPU upgrades to resolve problems with the BIOS. So always check those based on your motherboard and your RAID controllers. Those are good places to look for that. Updating your antivirus software. This is crucial. If you have antivirus software on your computer and it's not updated, guess what? Your computer is not protected. Okay? You have to have the latest definitions. So in Microsoft Security Essentials, you see that big yellow banner? That means you're not protected. And in this case, the reason why is the definitions were old. These definitions were from August of 2015. That means everything that's happened in the last six months in the virus world, your computer is not being protected from. So to protect you, you need to go ahead and click update. It'll download the newest, uh, latest definitions, install them, and then you'll be protected. And again, you should have that set up to automatically scan and automatically update your virus protection at all times because you want to make sure you're preventing yourself from infection. If you do this, you'll stop yourself from getting 90% of the viruses out there. Okay. So sample, uh, when you're scheduling a backup for preventive maintenance, which of the following would ensure that all of your data would be captured? Differential, full, incremental, or daily? B, full, right? Full backup's going to get it all. Differential will get you everything since the last time you did a differential. Incremental will get you everything since the last time you got a full. 